Tyler here with Main Angling and I'm in my new shop space. Uh, the shop is about 35 by 40 feet and has a fantastic little side office that I'll be using as a fly tying area and an office space to try and keep better track of all the online side of uh, a very small business, all the shipping, trying to keep track of invoices properly, all that stuff. It'll be fantastic to have a dedicated space for it. But what's more exciting is the shop space itself. I'll give you guys a quick walkthrough here, show you what, I, what spaces I'm using for what, and then I'll show you what I've been up to. Some net builds, some organizational builds, a lot of odds and ends, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. And here is the shop, and yes, it's already a mess. This is the initial setup. I have the table saw there with the catch table, my drum sander, which is a very vital part of making sure all of the little 8 inch strips I use on the net hoops are nice and flush and that they'll glue up well. Bit of temporary lumber storage and stuff I access more frequently as well as some small off cuts burls and uh, yeah just smaller pieces. I do have a little storage loft you'll see in a minute but uh, over to here next we have my bandsaw, a jointer, another jointer and my planer in there. I'm deciding between the two of those jointers. And you can see my little uh, spindle sander tucked underneath there. Don't have a full dust collection set up yet so I'm just running the shop vac. We kept the big comfy couch that came with the shop. It's perfect. It's on wheels. Sits in front of the wood stove there nicely. You can see a bit of the workstation which I'll use eventually as a chop saw station. And this blank area will be a workbench eventually once I get the money to uh, build a nice one. As you can see, we're half moved into the house, so there's some of the furniture that uh, unfortunately was residing in the shop at the time. And behind those curtains was some doors that were getting sprayed. I already had a few nets glued up before I started filming here, so I'm just taking the clamps off at this point, getting them ready to be jointed and then put through the planer before I cut them to their final shape. But before I get to that point, I might as well get some strips into the steamer. Just laying them out here and I'm going to find the center mark. That way I can mark that on the form and keep everything nice and true between when I bend it and when I glue it up. From here they're going to go into the steamer and we'll prep the other pieces. I like to give the steamer a good preheat just to make sure things are already rolling and I'll typically steam these trips for about an hour depending on the species um, and depending on the net layout some are easier to bend than others. Once I have those in the steamer I'll uh, send these handles through the planer just to get them nice and trued up. And then I will take them to the form I have and then over to the bandsaw. And using the bandsaw, I'll just get it cut to rough shape. I'll usually go about a sixteenth outside of the line. And I'll do that for both where the net hoop meets the handle as well as the actual hand grip at the bottom of the handle as well. And eventually those will go over to the spindle sander where I will uh, get them to final size and ready to go to be glued up. This is just a quick look at that process, but as I go here, I always like to be very particular about making sure that the taper is very even. If there's any high spots or low spots, then it won't get a very good glue joint, and you'll either see the joint or it just won't be structurally as sound.
Now those handles weren't quite ready yet, so I was just using my template instead of a final handle here. But these came out of the steamer and were ready to go after about an hour in there. And I bend them slowly, um, trying to put even pressure and keeping them nice and tight against the form. Slowly working them all the way in until they are bent and ready to go. And then those will sit overnight to settle into the, the shape and to be ready to be glued up. While those were setting on the form, I decided it was time to make some more storage and uh, this time I was looking at storage for my clamps and uh, I, as you can see I don't have a slot cut in yet in my catch table so this was a bit, uh, bit of a pain to cut these little 2 by 2s but that is the way it goes. I was pre-drilling the MDF and just getting them all screwed together before they went on the wall. Now I only screwed on the one side to start just so it's easier to get the 2x2s mounted to the studs and then once those were up to the wall and I was relatively happy with how square they are, I'd put on the other side and from there you're ready to add my clamps to it and just kept them, well, kept them off the floor where they were before. And another little side project I had on the go, which I did already through the main shop, was changing out the old incandescent lights to LEDs and doing a little bit of that here in the side office. These are just LED tubes and they come with a pigtail adapter that you can wire straight in or you can plug them in. In this instance though, I'm wiring them in and it made a huge difference in both the quality of the light and the amount of it that I'm getting in this space and it was well worth the time in doing. And here's a bit better of a view of the shop just from one of the back corners and you can see those lights I was talking about. Really nice white light and makes working on stuff way easier. After that I'm just getting right into another net project here. Those strips had set to size and I'm going to get the handle that was ready to go set in place and get glue onto these strips. After that it's just a whole bunch of clamping, making sure to work from the center out that way that there's even pressure and uh, get it all glued up and ready to go. As that was a glue joint under tension, I let that sit overnight. And here it is coming out of the mold, getting the clamps taken off of it. This is another net I was working on. Um, before I put it through the drum sander, I like to just take off a bit of the extra glue as well as any extra wood if uh, it didn't glue up perfectly square. And from there, it is off to the drum sander. Using 80 grit at this point because I'm not too worried about the fineness of the finish. I'm just trying to t get rid of a bit of material as well as square it up to itself. And here are a bunch of nets I had on the go glued up and ready for the next step in the process, which you'll hear a bit about here. But before that, as I continue on with the chaos of this shop, here is another handle. This is going to be for one of my sea run size nets made of some local maple and walnut as well. And here is one more for good measure on a net that is yet to have a name because I can't think of something that properly describes just how large it is. 
but this is one of the bigger handles. This one was made with oak, walnut, and some sapele. I let those set in the clamps for a few hours before taking them out and getting them ready to go in the jointer and the planer. Going to square up one side each here on one of the short handles for the C run size net and then as well for the extra long handle for the extra large net before putting them through the planer. I've been really happy with this planer so far with the helical cutter heads. It leaves a very fine finish which leaves very little sanding and very little tear out um, which is pretty fantastic. And for good measure here again is me tracing out the outline for this net handle. This one's quite a bit shorter than I typically do, so I'm just going to hand dry in the bottom handle and we'll taper that out once the hoop is glued on and once that's all been flushed up. From there we take these handles over to the trusty bandsaw to cut the taper into them and to square up the ends and uh, get them ready for the next step in the process. And I know this is jumping around a bit, but hey, that's just how my shop works. So here is another net band. This handle you saw earlier on in the video, it's one made of some local maple and walnut. And the uh, hoop is also walnut and maple. And here is another one that, to be honest with you, I messed up earlier and broke a piece of maple that was the middle strip. So I'm bending a piece of sapele here instead, just to try something a little bit different and get that one ready to be glued up. And this is that short maple handle you saw me working with earlier with the walnut accents. For this one I'm doing a three piece hoop of walnut, maple and walnut. I typically always use tight bond three for this. I find it's a really strong durable joint and it is a waterproof glue. I always like to glue up the strips first and then when I'm almost ready to start jointing it to the handle itself then add the glue at the bottom half just to give a bit more working time and to ensure it doesn't just all slough off. Alright, it's a stormy Saturday night here on the coast. I worked today at the day job and got into the shop and was excited to get going on things today. I got, have seven nets that are glued up and three that are sitting in the forms that have been steam bent, one that's gluing currently, all waiting on one router bit to cut the slots um, of which mine broke which I will get into when the new one shows up but I've ordered it wrong twice now so the package showed up today and it's too big so I have a bunch of orders hanging on the wall and a bunch in limbo in the meantime because apparently I'm a bit of an idiot I am going to sit here now instead and enjoy the sound of the wind drinking some Irish mist sitting in front of the fireplace and thinking about all of my mistakes, but mostly thinking about making a cradle net and how I'm going to design that. So I think that might be something I get started on here pretty quick. Cheers. And for nothing else but the sake of continuity, here is that short handled sea run net I've talked about oh so much here. Taking it off the form, getting all the clamps off, and then going to be taking it over to the bandsaw to take off all of the excess and a smarter than, man than myself would have cut that down a little bit more before I bent it but uh, hey here we are. 
Now a bit I forgot to film was I actually used a keyhole saw in a drill press to cut out a bit of the top of the handle where it meets the net just to make that circle a little bit more true as well as save a whole bunch of time which is a lot quicker than me sanding it all down. But here's me just getting that all flush into the hoop itself and flushing up any of the excess on my oscillating spindle sander. After that I figured it was a pretty good time to finally empty out the shop vac which as you can see was a bit overdue and uh, was a bit of a struggle fest so I did it outside to make the already dusty shop not more dusty. this is really the right one. I got nine nets or so on the wall waiting just to have the channel cutting them. So let's see if this is going to be the right one. I haven't seen that packaging before. <laughs> think that'll do. Now it is time to actually finally cut in the slot where I will tie in the net bags from the outside. For this I'm being very precise and eyeballing exactly center as close as I can with my eyes on all of these hoops and adjusting as I go. And from there we can get to the round over and rounding off the corners of these nets. I like to cut the channel on these first just so it's a little bit more true and less likely to wobble as I use this uh, router bit to do it all up. Now one of the more exciting things about having a shop the size of mine that I now have is that I can hoard wood and buy in bulk ahead of time. I found these maple slabs online and was happy to bring them to the shop and dry them out. It'll be another year or so before they're ready but I am not complaining because this will be fantastic wood to use in the future on whatever my heart does desire. Finally getting to the final stretches here of these net builds. I like to do a bit of hand filing work in the final tapering of these nets as well as ensuring that the handle is nice and comfy. From there I measure out the distance between holes and the distance for the holes for the net bag for mounting and we'll drill those through. I, I like to put a piece of scrap wood on the back side of the hoop just to try and prevent any excess blowout from happening. I won't make you sit and watch all of this process, but after that comes a whole heck of a lot of sanding, starting at 80 grit, usually working up to about 400, sometimes finer if I'm using uh, a lighter finish. In this case, I'm using a marine grade varnish, and it doesn't need to go as fine of a sanding because it's a pretty heavy coating.
Another aspect of my net building game I have upped is that I have lasers now. Instead of just branding these nets, I'm able to put my logo in them and any other customization, which is a pretty awesome feature to be able to offer. And here is a group of five nets ready for finish. I typically don't like to do any batches larger than this. It's just more of a pain to sand and to finish. So this is what I'm doing at this point. I'm going to take them over to the finishing room after a little bit more sanding. Because that's everybody's favorite thing to do and to watch getting done. I use this little princess sander to get the final details on the handles and on the transition of the hoop to the handle. I like to clean these nets quite well after they have been sanded with a bit of mineral spirits just to get any excess dust and dirt off of them. From there it's time to finish. I like to do a pretty heavily diluted first coat just to make sure it penetrates into the wood well. And after that, on these nets, I did an additional two coats of this marine varnish. And finally on to the last step before they are ready to go out and help you try and catch some fish at least, sewing on the net bag. For this I'm actually using a sail repair thread that's good to about 30 pounds of force and these clear rubber net bags which I just find great for photographs in the background. And one feature that shouldn't be overlooked is that they are less damaging on fish as they tend to take off less slime and they also don't hold any moisture and here you have it the fruits of our labor the first ones you saw there were my resident sized nets perfect for small streams and beautiful little cutthroat trout this is a sea run size great for those ocean going fish and for the truly optimistic people out there this is the optimist net which i frequently fish for bigger cutthroat trout and rainbow trout and for the people who really know what they're doing or at least like to claim they do the net that shall not yet be named which has about a 34 inch long hoop and a 48 inch long handle ready to go for whatever is in the water